Um, so uh, we're uh, talking about some uh, uh, intelligent robot for the uh, built environment. Um, let me firstly introduce what is um, uh, Transformer Robotics. Um, Transformer Robotics, we were a, a spin-off company from Nan Technological University, Singapore. Um, we develop robot and AI solution for the construction and the infrastructure industry. Um, as we feel that the timing was right. Um, so based on our experiences uh, in developing robotic system for many years, um, so we are uh, developing those systems using modular or robotic platform and concepts as together with AI and analytics to develop the uh, robots. We're mainly focusing right now on the uh, the uh, painting uh, and the inspection uh, robot, and also for the surface preparation. Um, the company, um, over the years, we had won the uh, Hong Kong's uh, uh, Construction Industry Council's uh, Construction Innovation Award uh, in, in 2019, um, and also Red Dot International Design Award for our spray painting robot. And, uh, Lastly, we in the end of last year, we also won the Energy Open Innovation Challenge hosted by Enterprise Singapore um, to develop robotic solution for confined space painting works. Um, so this just give you a, uh, just a brief <laughs> uh, chat uh, over the year, how Transforma uh, developed. Um, prior to the 2017, we were, at, we were funded by National Research Foundation, uh, and uh, also jointly uh, collaboration with uh, JTCs to look at uh, <coughs> um, robot in the construction domain, mainly for the industrial uh, painting, uh, the industry building painting, as well as the inspection works. Because um, we feel that um, there are so many robotic technology had developed and and then we're also trying to combine all this uh, technology and then uh, look for uh, 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 new opportunities um, in the domain, which not really explore um, uh, that much. That was 2015. So the project were done uh, in about two years. And then we did those trials in JTC and a few uh, uh, places and we spun off the company. And then over the years, we also received uh, the grants from different government agencies. And also we have some projects. Um, and then, um, so uh, we're trying to commercialize those systems because construction robots are uh, considered as uh, uh, field robotics. And then the environment uh, we're dealing with are not really Standard, yeah, it's different from the uh, manufacturing. The goods are really standardized, but buildings, every building is different. So how do we utilize robotic solution for non-standard um, environment that become very uh, big challenge. And fortunately, we, over the years development, um, we are, uh, we finally have our PictoBot had been um, uh, accepted by Singapore government and January 2021, we received the in principle acceptance uh, from the uh, from various government agencies, uh, building uh, construction agency, Ministry of Manpower, uh, the uh, National Environment Agencies, uh, Transportation Authority, and uh, Urban Development Authorities. So uh, we could use the robot uh, in those buildings, yeah, uh, commercially, yeah, because these are. So uh, are considered as uh, new and innovative project uh, products that re requires a faster uh, pace to do the further uh, enhancement and trials. So therefore making our uh, system to be uh, 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 available uh, as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, so now, in our company, Transformer Robotic, we developed the robots. We actually designed the robot from the ground up, you know, from the hardware and also the, uh, the software systems um, and then uh, integrations. Um, but we know that it, when we look at robotics for now, 
it is not just a piece of hardware. Uh, it also contains a lot of software component because in the past, we always think the robot can do just uh, programming yeah, from one point to another. But uh, nowadays, um, we want the robot to be able to cope with uh, a lot of variety of goods. In our case, a lot of different environments. Therefore, the robot may need to uh, possess the ability to sense uh, the sensors, the cameras, as well as the uh, AI algorithms to make it intelligently to learn what are we going to see? What are we going to do? So therefore, in the, the new robotics right now we're doing, even construction robots, the, um, considering this uh, overall effort, um, software play a very important role here. Uh, but nevertheless, we still need to have a very good hardware design in order to, um, have a, to be able to optimize the performance for both. And we also realize in the um, construction industry, also in other industries, robot is only part of the whole solution. Therefore, um, we were we are also looking into how do we bridging the um, the upstream work from the building information modeling systems, uh, life cycle management, as well as enterprise uh, resource man uh, planning systems uh, into this robot. And then we uh, deliver this uh, robotic uh, work like uh, workers on site and also in the factories and be able to uh, uh, gather those digital information and then use for all different uh, 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 the, the parties in the ecosystem. So therefore, this robot we think is going to be a very critical role here. Yeah. Um, and with those, uh, uh, their, um, the brains that making this digitization or digital construction to be uh, done very um, uh, swiftly. I think this is the, also the future that we would like to do because of the, uh, the pain point for the construction industry is now become a worldwide problem. Yeah. Um, before we talk about our uh, product, let me just uh, briefly mention what uh, do we have what do I mean by those uh, AI algorithms? Um, if we look at a painting work, right, we're looking at the buildings from residential to uh, industrial painting. So places have different heights and different dimensions. So therefore, uh, but their common things are, um, if you look at human doing that, it is really human using the human skill to do the work. So therefore we have developed the, uh, the methods let the robot be able to see using camera system to see your uh, environment to scan the surface uh, automatically and from that you can generate you will know what is the surface geometry no matter you're a flat wall um, a beam a column or undulate surface or even doors and windows so when the after the robot be able to scan that the robot will be able to automatically um, generate the necessary uh, movement trajectory and also controlling the painting parameters. For example, uh, we can keep the, uh, the spring head to be a uh, fixed distance to the wall all the time um, to ensure the painting quality. Yeah, because this uh, consistent consistency is not what a human can be done uh, uh, for a long time, yeah, because we know human worker, we, we need to work for a couple of hours and then we need to rest. Yet the robot may not need to do so. But this kind of capability um, is necessary for us to, to use for different kinds of uh, platform, no matter big or small. Um, and also inspection is also similar. The inspection we're talking about here is uh, uh, mostly for the uh, um, surface uh, defects, uh, mostly at the, uh, the finishing part, which means we're looking at cracks, alignment of the wall, evenness of the wall, and uh, um, also there are other color tonality, as well as the, uh, for example, when we look at the floors, we're also looking at the hollowness, uh, lippages of the tiles and so forth. So these are the uh, work right now done by these um, um, inspectors, but um, when the inspector do this, 
there um, um, there are uh, very tedious work, and yet uh, we need a, a robot there uh, to help them to make this process to be easier and also more productively. Yeah. Um, and then um, with all this core technology that I can use on different robotic platform, okay, we're embarking on using modular uh, technology so that we can make the robot uh, configure for different kinds of purposes and also different sizes um, to go into different environment because we know construction environment um, the, 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 uh, the uh, situation is quite um, um, various, complex. So therefore, there's no single solution can cope with all. So therefore, we're looking at a way how to do this uh, ad adaptation and modular fashion will be the, uh, the way to go. And along with a, uh, the cloud platform that uh, can help us to um, to monitor the situation and also collect the, the data, uh, we can also uh, look at more uh, globalized uh, optimization on those tasks and so forth. Yeah. So um, we have, um, um, here we just show you some of our core products. Yeah. We have developed the, uh, the painting robot, uh, we call the Pictobot. Uh, in Greek word, the Picto means uh, uh, painting. Yeah. Um, we we'll like to use uh, uh, some of these uh, short terms. Yeah. So this is an intelligent spray painting robot. Um, it possesses the cameras um, and then the robot arms of made of different sizes, made of different performances, uh, depending on the need. Yeah, because some of the painting work require very uh, fast movement. Some may not. Some may, may need more delicate movements. So these robots. Um, uh, will be able to perform the work uh, at a higher speed than human and reducing the, the safety on the material and also save on the cost. The reason is those robots, uh, we will uh, go into the sites. Um, so they possess all the, uh, the paint uh, and necessary power so we can uh, minimize their uh, setup time. And also the robot, uh, the camera system actually allow them to do uh, extended hours, not just on the daylight because daytime human doing that rely on human vision, but machine vision we're using can overcome this. Of course, the question is, are we able to do 24 hours? But the robots, we still need to, from time to time need to be tender by human. So therefore we may not need to look at 24 hours, but uh, with some extended hours uh, actually that's sufficient uh, help for that. Uh, we also have this uh, uh, building quality inspection robot we call the quicker bot. Um, that robot help, I mean, the, the major things it does is help us to collect those inspection data to be objectively and also automatically. Because uh, in the construction side, updated data uh, become um, uh, quite, uh, um, routine work, but it's sometimes human may forget that. Yeah. So therefore, with the machine uh, around, um, this can uh, make the, the, uh, the work to be automatic and also uh, very objective, uh, making things to be um, uh, easier. But having said that, we, we're not so-called really removing the human because um, the machine will collect the raw data. So in some situation, we may still need a human, say inspector, to give the final endorsement. Yeah. So therefore, in this case, it definitely can uh, already save some of the manpower. And also, uh, important thing is the coverage is like 100%. Yeah, because right now, human doing that inspection work mostly on the sampling basis. Yeah. Um, so another important uh, aspect of this kind of construction robot is the way you operate that. Yeah, because um, frank speaking, construction robot is for the on-site work. Um, it's, um, it's actually a brand new type of robot yeah, for workers. Yeah. Um, if you ask people to look at industrial robot, um, I believe a lot of people have seen that, but when you are in the factory doing the automation work, um, 
a lot of workers probably never even really need to touch that robot. It's only the, uh, the engineer to touch that. But in the constructing environment, that would be different. Yeah? The robot need to work with some of the, uh, the, with the operators and then some of the work together. The robot, we still need to have human to do certain operations. Say, I can move into the, the sites and I can choose the paint. Um, of course, choosing the paint, that depending on the, uh, the actual situation, because if this is a brand new building, uh, entirely new building for the, uh, the prime code uh, that we can configure just with a fixed uh, uh, proportion to do that. Yeah. Um, but we also taking into account that uh, the workers uh, may not really possess the skill to operate those machines. Of course, using that, we, we need to go to training. But in, in fact, when we use the robot, the robot um, can do roughly about 90% of the work, I should say, because um, the robot could avoid the, uh, the window or, 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 uh, or doors, uh, but most of the time, we'll just leave a, a small gap around that so that we may... Uh, uh, may not need to mask out the glasses uh, or do some minimum um, setup. Um, so the human may need to go in there to do some preliminary work and then uh, let the robot do the majority work and human go in there to final, to finishing the, do a uh, finishing touch. Yeah. Um, so this show you some of the, uh, the work we're doing in the, uh, the, the basement car park. So this is a uh, renovation work. So therefore you can see that uh, we still have those uh, facility like a fire hydrant. Um, there are also some uh, switches. <coughs> so, but the robot, uh, when you do the work, uh, it, we have the camera is uh, in front. So you will scan the surface. We, the robot will go up doing the scanning work and coming down to do the, um, the, the painting job. So this is very similar to how human do it. Uh, and the movement of the robot here, they are all automatic because the robot will follow the walls. Uh, um, and then, um, so wall painting, ceiling painting uh, can also do, but the ceiling painting is uh, mainly coverage on the, on the top. So the navigation uh, method will be different. So essentially, uh, if you look at this, this robot, we, uh, we need a human going there to bring the robot in and then do a quick setup. The, the, the paint um, is in there. It's fully operated by batteries. Yeah. So um, uh, the, the, this, this particular version design, we make that uh, to be able to operate for four hours and then the battery is swappable so that uh, we need a, a like a supervisor to go in there every four hours. You can change the battery and then uh, uh, refueling the tank, and then uh, the robot can continue the work. So therefore, we do not need the robot to go back to the charging station and uh, to 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 be there. Um, so we can maximize their their usages. Yeah. So these are the uh, uh, some of the painting results. Yeah. Um, then um, let me show you. Um, how do we do the window yeah, and also the corner? Because I just mentioned to you that uh, the, the robot be able to, um, um, uh, using the robot, to the camera to see that. So therefore the algorithm can cope with it automatically. Yeah. And this algorithm actually are the same for smaller or bigger robot. The one you saw in the big yellow robot, that was the robot for the industry painting we did for the, uh, um, uh, in, the, uh, uh, the, the in the prior to the, uh, the spin off. Yeah. Um, we have been using this for the uh, on-site work. Um, as I mentioned to you, some of the car park, uh, condo uh, public facilities, and also in the prefabrication plants, because in Singapore, we have many uh, precast plants and also PVVC plants, which is the uh, modular construction uh, uh, type of uh, 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 setup. So um, in that case, the, each uh, 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 an apartment is actually composed of several units. This is the, in the size like a container uh, truck, a container. Uh, 
and then we piece together just like a, uh, uh, a piece like a, a Lego set. Yeah. So when they do the uh, fit out, um, they were doing the fit out in either in the factory or in temporary space that we need to put in install the the, the window frames, door frames, as well as some uh, prime code. So therefore, um, in this case, the application will be uh, quite uh, concentrated and uh, large amount. So using the robot to do the fit, uh, the painting work become uh, quite uh, useful. And also uh, because uh, building are more the more or less that decorative painting, but the same technology we could uh, use for the as a protective coating. Yeah. So therefore, we also have uh, work on the with the oil and gas and energy industry to look at the confined space painting, as well as some of the power plant painting that uh, it's a concrete building, but they need a very uh, a different type of uh, coating like uh, anti radiations. So that kind of painting. Uh, specification is very similar to such kind of oil and gas uh, uh, requirements. Yeah. So using robot for that purpose is even more um, uh, justified by because the environment is, uh, is hazardous and healthy, unhealthy. Yeah. Um, now, in terms of the um, um, uh, uh, this uh, quality inspection robot, it is this is also we call the. Uh, um, collaborative yeah, or cooperative yeah. because currently if we do this uh, finishing inspection work normally you will have two inspectors going in tandem to check the all the buildings yeah. so um, because each one they have their own um, their uh, assignment and then uh, finishing one unit and they will uh, discuss what are the issues because there's some some defects are uh, difficult to categorize yeah. so in the new way of operation, we, we may need only one inspector and then bring the robot. And the robot can do most of the surface inspection um, by itself with the, with the, the scanner, with the, uh, the laser structure light and camera. They can check the dimensional defects as well as other defects like the cracks using imaging processing techniques. Um, then um, um, with, with the raw data, uh, and the, and then the uh, the criteria because this robot now we are uh, pretty much tuned to uh, Singapore BCA's a uh, Concourse Nine standard, um, but then uh, for every uh, uh, developer they may have a little bit different kind of uh, additional uh, standards. So this because this is uh, from the raw data to the output, uh, so we can also apply those uh, different criteria to uh, give the different acceptance criteria, uh, acceptance status uh, to the different uh, end users. So the robot can be operate uh, using a, um, um, the mobile, uh, mobile app. And we can see the, uh, they can immediately to look for the defects and they can generate a report and send to the, uh, the, the necessary users. And subsequently um, the users will, will pass this to the, uh, the contractor to go back to do the repair if there's defect that need to be uh, rectified. Yeah. So these, the robot will be able to, um, uh, let me show you in this video, the robot will be able to um, um, uh, the robot has several operating modes. Huh? Um, it can be done by um, remote control, just like a joystick. And then uh, another is uh, you follow the person or finally they can do autonomous navigation. Yeah. But because of the instruments are quite, uh, the range is quite big. So therefore um, you go into the room and sometimes you do not need it to be uh, uh, go around all the time. You just need, need to stay in the room in a few spots they can do the complete scanning. So therefore, um, this efficiency is also very fast. For uh, about a 100 meter uh, square room, um, this robot can finish the job in about 20 minutes. And then of course, the human in inspector will be able to check on those defects the robot cannot see. For example, uh, like a door frame, um, there are some minor defects because the robot mostly uh, 
configured to do the large surfaces, no matter floors, walls, or even ceilings. So they can quickly go to scan, give you the whole complete picture. Whereas human, they really need to go in there, inspect in detail and using your rulers and so forth. So in this case, this robot can really help uh, to speed up that process and give you more objective results. Yeah. And we, after that, we could combine both results and then uh, generate a uh, combined report, give you a very complete information. Yeah. So um, those, this robot, um, in fact, um, we have been uh, um, doing uh, quite a few tests in Singapore's uh, developers. Um, this, this do have a, uh, they're, they're saving in time. And then it could become a inspector's assistant yeah, and facilitate their uh, report or the examination process because um, this is uh, the handover process, including from the contractor to the developer or the, and also developer to the housing buyers. So at every handover process, this is, uh, there are a lot of uh, document uh, exchange. Uh, so in this case, the, the robot, when we automate the process, this can make the whole thing to be uh, more uh, smoothly. Yeah. Of course, um, the same technology we can configure to use in those prefabrication plants to check the quality of their precast components. Yeah. For example, you look at the dimensions, surface roughness, and so forth. Um, so um, we are also starting with some project uh, with the in the in the factory because um, precast plants they are also a part of the manufacturing process. So um, it's similar to automation, but different from our standard electronics or other uh, consumer goods manufacturing. So the workpiece they're dealing with are always very large and they make things to be challenging. Yeah. Um, we are also, uh, because of COVID-19, so we also use our, uh, based on our spray painting uh, technology, we developed a uh, disinfection robot we call XDBot. This is a precision disinfection robot. Uh, why we call that is because this robot is a spring type system. Um, it will be able to do disinfection for anything above the ground. Yeah, because we know there are many uh, cleaning robot, right? They're sweeping the floor, mopping the floor. And of course they can put the, with disinfectant and so that uh, they can clean and disinfect the ground. But anything above the ground, for example, your doorknobs, uh, the windows, uh, handrails, tables, chairs, um, these are which were our, at our working height. But you, we don't see many systems really can help us to do that. Usually, when we look at this, uh, having some COVID-19, they go into so-called uh, deep cleaning regime. In this case, they have to disinfect everything. Yeah. So, so this robot, we specifically help us to look at, at all the working heights. And because rain type, then we can, um, we can put in disinfectant according to the, to the need of different places. For example, public uh, uh, venue, hospitals or schools, they're all different. Yeah. And all of this, um, we, we have another platform do, right now doing most of our backend support, which we call T-Cloud. Um, so this platform will allow us to remotely monitor the system. And of course, especially for the inspection robot, uh, the critical thing is how do we um, collect back the uh, inspection data? So this cloud, platform uh, would enable us to do this kind of uploading as well. Um, so this is kind of infrastructure support because our disinfection robot also now deployed in the US. So uh, if we do the certain uh, uh, advanced technical support, it become a very challenging task if we don't have such kind of a system. Yeah. Um, so this just give you some more detail on our XD bot because this robot, uh, because when we look at design, all of our robots, uh, we're all taking into account how do you operate that. So we have a mobile app as well as a, uh, a more uh, is laptop or PCN operations because mobile app allow us to do uh, tele-operation of the system, which means you go for uh, emergency deployment. 
you first go into this place first time, then without any map, then you use the human to operate that. So the you can use the camera to see your surrounding from surrounding, and then the sensor will still be able to detect uh, the things next by. So uh, and then um, also in this situation, we can use this uh, app to help to map out the environment. And once the map generated, uh, if we do more um, a regular deployment, for example, you, you let me the robot to go out for uh, three times a day, uh, because we know when we do this robot for the uh, this, this frequently touched surface inspection, uh, sorry, disinfection, um, we know in, like in Singapore environment, we use many, there, there are many cleaning aunties. Yeah. Uh, they do every day, yeah, and they have to go for three, four shift a day. So uh, it's quite tedious work. In that sense, um, with this uh, uh, the robot, um, we can um, because we already map out the surface. So the robot could be able to go out, uh, following a routine uh, uh, a route and do the cleaning work two, three times or even four times a day. And after that, you go back to the station. The station, then you can do the recharging and the replenishment. Yeah. So this is how we envisage the use of the system. And if you encounter certain obstacle, for example, uh, somewhere like a human, uh, then uh, yeah, you could be able to uh, automatically uh, 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 get around with it. Yeah. So this is uh, the robot where we're, we're, we're testing that um, in, uh, and use uh, uh, the content uh, med medical schools uh, hospital. Yeah. So um, this this show that that we can go for the uh, the the cleaning room and this is what I mentioned to you. Yeah, that's right. The uh, he has a, a a planned route to go, but if you encounter someone blocking his way, either will stop or he will just get 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 by, and then uh, yeah, this is one of your uh, your for our cleaning uncle. The, the, the interface is very simple so that even themselves, they can just like operating a, a computer game. Yeah. Uh, so this has become a very important cause. Um, when we doing this, uh, uh, the, the, this uh, operating all these robots, uh, are we going to do that fully auton autonomous or uh, in the op uh, teleoperated mode? And even fully autonomous mode, I still need to have human going there to, uh, you know, uh, doing something here, there. So therefore, uh, no matter in which way, we have to put the human factors into considerations. Yeah, how you want this the robot to be plant, replenished, or you know how automated that you want to be. So therefore, this robot can be used in different environments because uh, offices, convention centers, hospitals. You know they they have all different kind of uh, uh, application scenarios. Yeah. Um, of course, um, we because the product we uh, are all our own development, especially the this disinfection robot. We did it uh, in less than a year time, and then we are going into the uh, the uh, from the product conception to the uh, production model. Yeah. So COVID nineteen speed up that development. But we're also uh, now working with some other company um, because some company, uh, they're in, they are traditional companies. They have certain equipment like this Holland's inspection robot. So we work with uh, the Shimbo uh, Singapore. This uh, is a Japanese company, um, but they have offices here and they have a device to um, be able to check the, uh, the, uh, the Holland's or the uh, structural integrity of the um, the, the 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 concrete or in this case tiles. Yeah. So um, we we put this device along with our robot technology to make a robot to check the hollowness of your marble floor or uh, standard concrete floor automatically. Um, so what this robot does is firstly it will go into uh, into the room to create a map, and then afterwards we will be able to start this robot and the robot will be able to run automatically just as you see here. And it will cover the whole areas and knock on the, uh, the, 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 the floors. So 
hollowness uh, in those machines, we have, uh, they will be able to detect how deep it is. Uh, so we have four different levels. Uh, so every, uh, they, they sample, uh, you can control the, the resolution of that. Uh, and afterwards, it will create a, we call it a hollowness map, or you can see some other like a temperature map uh, of the floor to check the condition, whether you uh, are the places that you really need to repair or not. So this is really a very different from how human doing the hollowness check, right? We know that people, uh, the inspector doing that using a rod, and then uh, the inspector need to be trained to listen to the sound uh, and decide where is the defect. Yeah. And this is now, uh, along with the instrument and the robotized uh, work. So this can be done just effortlessly. And then you can see the whole picture uh, in a more comprehensive view. And also an important thing is, because when we did this, you, you saw that uh, was we, we do the, uh, the testing in the, um, the, the building just before the TOP. Um, if this is an apartment of a uh, high rise in the same unit of different floor it could be the same. So therefore we just need to uh, prepare the map once then um, the whole um, buildings are entirely the same unit there. Uh, we, we don't need to do uh, mapping anymore. It just can go in there to do the, to, to do the, uh, the check. Yeah. So this is uh, really a different, uh, uh, it's a um, um, big jump from human to the machine uh, work. Yeah. Um, so if you look at uh, the, the product now we have, right? So we're pretty much focusing on those uh, um, painting and the inspection and some part of the work of disinfection. Disinfection, it's kind of, um, uh, we can say this more related to facility management. Yeah. So looking ahead, um, because of the technology, so we are going into more on the coating side, inspection side, and also of course, surface disinfection. Yeah, because this is due to our spray painting technology. Um, one more aspect of that uh, I, I forgot to mention is that this spray painting, sorry, the, the, the disinfection robot is a electrostatic. Yeah. So that, that, that means that when you spray out the disinfectant, you will be able to uh, spray evenly to the, um, the whole uh, surface on the back. My, my robot does not need to go around to do that. It just go in front and then swiping through. So it can make this uh, the spraying uh, action to be very productive. Um, in this case, that uh, is the, uh, the advantage of the electrostatic uh, spray. And we did that electrostatic gun ourselves because uh, at first we thought we could integrate some, some electrostatic gun uh, in the beginning of that development in uh, February uh, last year, 2020. But it turns out that uh, it could. So therefore we had made our decision to do uh, the R&D uh, immediately um, so that uh, uh, that can be uh, used at later stage. And also many industrial painting work require electrostatic uh, sp uh, spray pad. So that's become a quite a, uh, a interesting, fruitful journey for us. Yeah. So um, yeah, so right now, so we have uh, quite a few uh, collaboration partners and then we are actually grateful for the support from the BCA, JTCs, um, and then uh, we're working with a, a number of uh, uh, the painting suppliers um, and also uh, some of our collaborators, um, uh, not only locally, but overseas, uh, Holloyd, Kajima, and uh, Nishimbo, uh, and of course, uh, 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 SKK and also the Shell Oil. Yeah. Um, so I think I'll just uh, stop my sharing here.